What's going on guys? Hit pause here with another uh, tutorial slash walkthrough on something to do in UE4 for fun. Um, what I'm doing here is actually doing a dynamic depth of field adjustment while I am um, aimed on my gun. So if I demo that, uh, right now everything's kind of set to crapsville, but it's just a test. But when I aim, you can see that updates so if I aim on something in the distance uh, everything behind that goes blurry I don't have it set to everything um, in front of that goes blurry but like if I pop there you can see the change there and then if I'm aimed way out at the skybox it's just basically it still uses that distance so it's just so high you don't even notice it which is fine it's not happening per tick I've avoided it so far and the way I got around that uh, was to I created this event and I'm just running it on a 0.25 timer because it's not something I feel needs to be updated all that often so I'm trying to avoid tick uh, in my entire character because you'll notice that if I pop out a tick function it appears right there does not take me to tick anywhere. That's how you can tell if you have tick somewhere. Just try to throw out a new node. If you can't, like, if there's, you know, if this was really huge and you had tick somewhere, um, you know, and you couldn't really find it or you weren't, you didn't care to, you can just right-click, type tick, and it'll take you right to it. Um, but that's the purpose of this experiment slash tutorial slash video is I want to get a smooth transition on my focal distances. Um, without using tick. Now, hopefully this little asshole doesn't start barking next to me, but if he does, oh, I can't really do anything about it. But I just want to show something hilarious here. Watch what happens when you actually look at this make post process settings. Good golly, Miss Molly, holy shitesburg. That's a lot of stuff. And it actually acts weird when you zoom like all the way out. It sometimes will collapse itself on you and disappear, and then you scroll back up, and you're like, oh, it's up here. So then you zoom in, and then it re-expands. It's kind of frustrating to work with this, being such a humongous set of stuff. Um, but just so you guys know how I'm doing it, it's fairly simple. So if I aim, if I'm, you know, if I'm not reloading, I can aim. So if I aim, then I, you know, run my function for do aim, and then I, like I said, I say set to start firing off this timer it's looping when I unaim I clear this timer okay and that's all that is there and basically what I do is I run a line trace and I'm doing it from the camera uh, let's go ahead and compile get rid of these errors so you don't get worried about that uh, you can see I'm tracing out to really far 500,000 units um, is the max distance that I'm tracing uh, just I just set it to something huge so I don't have to worry about it uh, I'm probably going to tune that back later to actually fit, you know, kind of the general scale of the world. But I want this to work in any map. And what if I have a map that actually is that big, right? And I aim off in the distance. I don't want it blurring something weird. So, you know, same general way to get a start and end location. You get the location. You get the rotation forward vector. Or multiply it by how far you want it to go. Add that to your location. And that's your end. And then your start is obviously just your own location. I'm doing it by channel, that way I will actually zoom in on like a leaf of a translucent surface or a masked surface. Uh, it should in fact, like if I aim at like a bush, it should actually uh, focus on the bush. Um, and then we do a simple uh, get distance here, so I subtract my camera distance or camera location from the location where the trace actually hits something. I get that length, that is my distance set the focal distance and then basically I make post process settings now you'll notice that I have an empty array here for blendables and there's a reason for that and the reason for that is because if you don't do that uh, it gives you a big ass error saying hey blendables has to have something plugged in here which is dumb because I don't really care to have something plugged in there uh, and means that anytime I have full screen effects now it's going to be a little irritating because I'm going to have to come back here and make sure it's added here to the player camera. So as long as I make sure that all of my full screen effects are just on the player camera and not in my global post process settings and stuff like that, uh, I should be okay. But I'm worried about world blendables and shit, but that's a, that's a completely different point. 
And so we set the focal distance. I do have a checkbox. There's one of these, if I drag this down, there is one for override. Um, I'm just kind of scrolling down until I see the check. Override depth of field focal distance. Anytime you actually activate one of these settings and then collapse it back up like this, okay, which again is really kind of frustrating. Um, it should show up here, like as soon as I plug these in, they, they, they stayed on the list, but for some reason, override film white point and override film saturation, I'm not touching them, yet they're here, and I actually did change override the focal distance, and it's not here. So I don't know what's going on there, that's maybe just something weird. Um, and then all you do is just get the camera and say set post-process settings, and you just pop this out right here. Make post-process settings, doesn't need anything plugged into it. You just type make post, okay? Um, you can actually get what the settings are if you want, but then at that point you need to actually uh, basically get post process settings like that, and then you need to break them, and that will give you that uh, monster. As you can see here, as soon as it comes out, override film white point, these are here, and I'm not using them, so I'm not really sure. But again, if I drop that down, it becomes that massive list. So I don't need that shit, so I'm going to get rid of it. So what I want to do is I want to, like I said, I want to figure out how to do this without using tick. Um, I'm going to try to reserve tick uh, as much as I can. I'm going to avoid it for as long as humanly possible because, like I said, right now what's happening is when I do this, it may not be all that easy to tell, but it's not a transition it's not like your eyes are adjusting to it it's an instantaneous swap of the value okay that's on off on off so I want to I want to try to have a nice little blend in there and I'm thinking that I can do it with a timeline lerp like I showed in my last video oops sorry I didn't mean to hit the mic with my thumb um, but I think I'm gonna need to store two variables because what I could do possibly I wonder if I could do a, like a multiply instead just have like a float that defaults to one and multiply that I'm not really sure I want it to happen over a nice curve so let's go ahead and just get a timeline out and we can see what we can get so I always forget to type the line part. So we're going to add a timeline. The name of this is going to be DOF transition. Uh, no, that's not descriptive enough. Distance transition. Okay. I don't want it to take that long. I want it to take about a quarter to a half a second. We'll try a half a second first. Let's go ahead and add a float track, and we'll just call this uh, distance. Should we be immature about it? Yes, always. Any chance, oh, come on. Any chance, you gotta hit enter, or it doesn't take. That you get it to, you know, be, be a 10 year old, take it, take it. Uh, and I think it's shift, yeah, shift click. Okay, so, the value is zero at the start. We shift click over here, we have a time of 0.5 and a value of one and we are going to let's go ahead and zoom all the way here and let's just set these to auto so that we get uh, ease and ease out so regardless of what direction we do I'm actually kind of thinking that um, in this case I'm not going to be lurping back because when I un there isn't going to be any point where I want to lurp back to a value like it's not gonna. It's always gonna be lurping to a value, right? In a, yeah, because I'm zooming right now. I'm looking at something that's 200 units away, and then all of a sudden I look at something that's 2,000 units away. I want it to lurp to 2,000, right? But when I lurp back to another object that's closer, I'm not reversing a lerp because the closer object might be say 150. So I need to lerp from 2,000 to 150. So I'm always gonna lerp forward. In that case, I think I want an ease out that kind of zings up and an ease out curve looks like this okay um, no no 
yeah, ease out because remember this is out, this is in. So I'm easing out of here. So I maintain the value for a longer period of time, and then I basically come zinging in here. Okay, this is good for like a a really heavy door that opens to a slammed stopped position. Uh, if you want it to open to a soft spot, you have to add a keyframe here so you can get a nice little blend between that little curve right there. But in this case, like I said, this is be a, this this is a heavy door curve is what I always kind of think of it as, but it's an ease out. So with that done, we have that and we have the value now. With our distance tranny. <laughs> That's where I like trannies to always be, at a nice healthy distance. Okay, so let's um, not that I have anything against their personalities or anything. I'm just not interested. Okay, so how am I gonna do this? Do I need? I think I want to store a previous and a new. So what I can do is if I store a focal. So this is gonna be. Um, focal distance new. Okay, that should rename all my variables, and it does. Let's go ahead and make a copy of that, and we'll call that focal distance. Not old. We'll call it prev. Prev. Preview. Previous. Okay. So, focal distance previous is going to be our default. So they, they both are starting out at Zilcho marks right now, but I think that's okay. Uh, because what I want to do is I want to say, okay, every time I run this, every quarter second, I want to compare the length here. If this equals, if it equals the previous distance, which it won't right now, Um, which is good. It shouldn't on the first time I hit it, which is good, I think. I think that's good. I'm not real sure about that. So we're going to run a branch. I may want to run a sequence here. So if it equals that, I really don't want to do anything, right? Because it's the same already. But if it's not, what I want to do now is I want to, this is going to be the last thing I do, so I'm just going to move this nice and out of the way so I can do all my mathifications here. So what my result here is this is what I need to get written out, right? The focal distance new needs to get written. So focal distance new needs to lerp so let's do a lerp with a float I believe that's just straight lerp yes so I want to do uh, I'm trying to think trying to think because here's a nice thing finished and that's going to come in handy um, so the new focal distance will be that the actual distance that I want it to become will be that the alpha will be that and when it's completed I believe I want to set the previous to the new so they match And focal distance new needs to make sure that it gets set when this is done. That's what will happen on update. So you're gone. Again, false, I don't care about. And then we do that. So the first time I do this, it will not equal zero. The focal length will actually equal... something crazy, right? Some random value. Then on update,
Yeah, update idle erp based on that alpha. When it's finished, I set the two values to be the same. Then I update the post process. That might actually be it. It might be that simple. I might have messed something up. Okay, I need to, uh, I can't really tell. So I need to exaggerate the fact here. So I'm actually going to make it take five seconds. Why would, oh. I'm actually just going to set this to be linear for now. So there's no confusion about that. Okay. Okay, that felt good. That's too quick, that's too quick, that's too quick, that's too quick. Okay, so... I think I need play from beginning. I think I need play from start. Because I think once this is played through, it'll never play through again. So I think I want play from start every time. I'm not sure that's going to freak it out. Okay, that felt like a nice transition. That felt nice. It feels nice. I mean, it's slow. It takes five seconds to get there, right now. But that's it. Actually, it does it. So let's let's exaggerate here, right? So let's aim right here, and we aim over there. Pretty slow blend. Yeah, and it's working back and forth. Awesome. That was it. So that's it. Oh, oh good timing, I guess, because the dog's going to start going apeshit. So thanks for watching. This is Hippos signing off, and I'll see you guys in the next one.